His new book, Going South, A Road Trip Through Life, is a rollicking meditation on mateship, memory and mortality. We welcome award-winning writer Colin Hogg. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. It's a really good read. Oh, thank you. I loved it. Tell us a story about how it came to be, this road trip. I grew up in the south, in Invercargill in mm. Southland, and m moved away when I was relatively young, um, you know, 20 or so. I've always had a thing about the way New Zealanders have a kind of a blank spot about Southland, you know. They don't actually seem to quite know where it is or, you know, what they talk about the South, they never quite go South enough. Mm -hmm. And for years I've been toying with the idea of doing some sort of book about the South, just trying to sort of raise the mythology a little, yeah. perhaps. Um, but it's a hard sell. And then I moved to Wellington last year and caught up with an old friend of mine, Gordon McBride. We started on the Southland Times together when we were 17. 46 11. odd years ago. 46 hey, odd years ago. Put a number ago. on it. Very odd. <laughs> um, and he came to my birthday drinks and he sat down with a serious look on his face and he said he had some news for me he had to share. He'd been to a specialist the day before and he had terminal cancer, mm -hmm. he told me. He had maybe a year, maybe two years. Um, and my for some reason, my immediate response to this was, we should go away on a road trip. And what did he, he said, say? we should go south. Yeah. And I said, you mean back there? And he said, yes. So a month or so later, that's exactly what you we did. did. The closer we got to it, the more I thought, this is the book. This is the book about the south. It's about two old mates going back, trying to rediscover their pasts, maybe remembering things, going places work a bit of history through it, publisher loved the idea, and that's... And that's exactly kind of what you do when you go back to all those old haunts of your childhood, and Gordon's, mm. you go back to the Southern Times, what was that like? Sort of like <laughs> a haunted house. Was it? Half empty. I mean, it's the story yeah, of the media these yeah. days. You know, there were 300 people working there once, there's about 50 now. They've since yes. sold the building, they're moving out. Ah. Um, so that was a wee bit sad, but it was, you know... Things have changed. Uh, they have. Uh, was it a real? It must have been just a real trip down memory lane. I mean, you guys flattered together yep. in, in what appears to be, according to the book, a little bit of a party house. Yeah, it was a party there, house. There, there was a lovely quote actually. It said, um, "We often ran out of money and food, though we really ran out of beer or reasons to have parties." That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Saturday nights. We worked on the morning newspaper, so yeah. everyone had Saturday night off. So oh, perfect. It was party night. And in a place like Invercargill, you had to make yeah, your own fun. Yeah. You know? Southland is an incredibly beautiful place, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a rugged beauty, yeah. as we say. Yeah. You know, it's not pretty, pretty, but it's full of marvellous people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a you know it's it's it, it's a deep place, and I, I don't think people really understand it just sort of passing through. But the coast is incredible, and um, you know it is beautiful, and it's very empty. What do two guys talk about? for a week when they're cooped up in a car together? Everything else. But? Except the matter at hand. Yeah, really? Really, pretty much. I always felt, though, in our silence as we were talking about it, I suppose, mm. you know. But it was... You know, it was a distraction. Did, it was did, a kind of creative distraction for us. I, did did it make you think, because of what Gordon was facing, did it make you think about your own mortality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And what did you think? Like, did you start to think, maybe I want to tick a few more boxes? Well, I thought at least he knows. That's what I thought. Um, and, you know, Gordon's a very positive person and he lives in the moment. And um, he's just sort of gotten on with his, you know, that cliched bucket list and, yeah. and doing things and enjoying things. And the rest of us just put it and in the, the cupboard. Thing, maybe he's doing that because he's found out he's sick. And, and maybe mm. that's what most of us need. You know, we, we wait until that but this yep. is possibly a lesson... And it could be too late. ...letting it happen be yeah. before that, eh? Because there was research out recently that talked about guys of, of middle age, maybe they're married, maybe they're not, but that they don't have a lot of friends. What did this teach you about friendship, long-lasting friendship too? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's true. Okay. I think there's a lot of misconception about male friendship. I mean, writing this book made me think about male friendship and the differences between male and female friendship. I don't think men have that need to constantly connect and keep in touch that perhaps women do. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, once you've established a friendship, because Gordon and I made friends 46 years ago, as you said, yeah. and then didn't really see each other for decades much. You know, we kept in touch. But then uh, when we got back together again, it was as if... No time had passed, eh? Yeah, that's That's exactly. the test of a true friendship. Yeah. It's a very cool book, Going South. Colin Hogg, thank you so much for your time this morning. Pleasure. Uh, and Colin's new book, Going South, is out right now. If you are keen to find out more, just head to our website for all the links and the details.
Some really cool readers, I said, coming up very soon. We are crossing to LA to chat to Grammy and Academy Award winning performer Melissa Etheridge right after this from Mel.